call the PAHCC board meeting to order. It is 5.02 p.m. Uh, can I start with introduction of board members? And I'll just, well, some of you are muted. So um, I'll start with Dana. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Dana Peterson. I am the superintendent director of the uh, uh, Hanford Regional Technical Missy? Missy? Nope. So she's there. Her mic might be up. Uh, so she unmuted herself. Oh, now she's muted. I think people should mute themselves unless they're speaking because I think there's a bandwidth issue and some of our board members are, are not able to unmute because of the number of people on the call. So. Missy? Linda? Linda Barrett, clerk. Kim? Kim Farnham, the community at large representative from, uh, I live in the for Mount Avery Union High School. Kelly? Kelly Mills, uh, Dean of Students and Agricultural with us. Ah, sustainable agriculture instructor. <laughs> Mike? Um, Morgan McGrath, Addison, way northwest. <laughs> Trace? Trace Alexander, Executive Administrative Assistant for PAHCC. Gibson? <clears throat> Uh, Gibson Smith, the business manager. Christina? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Christina Macklin, Addison Northwest School District. No. Lorraine? Well, all right. It's Lorraine Morris, um, AC, ACSD representative. Wendy? Sorry, are you doing guests now? I'm going just through everyone that's on my okay. screen. Okay, that was me. Uh, so, Wendy Pratt, I am the um, IB coordinator and math coach at the Career Center. Thank you. Gretchen? Gretchen Bailey, bookkeeper. <laughs> um, let's see if I can. What we got here? Is that Woody? Yep, that's Woody. Hello. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, we have MCTV. Lisa. Hi, Lisa Reader, instructor, design and illustration program, and visual communications. Uh, Penelope just joined. Penelope, introduce yourself, please. Or not. And did I miss anyone? Yes, Brenda Logi, School Counseling Coordinator. Oh, sorry. Thank you. And who is? Alti Danforth, Human Services Instructor. Oh, okay. I was looking at, I've got another black square down here that I don't know who it is. Thank you. Did we, thank you, Elton. Did we get everyone that's online? I think so. Um, may I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Kim. Moved by Kim to approve the agenda. May I have a second? I'll second. Mike McGrath has seconded the motion to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approving the agenda as written, please say aye. 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 Or, or raise your hand. <laughs> any opposed? Motion's passed. Um, comments, Dana, comments from visitors? 
this is you. I'm going to let you take that. I don't have a comment. Well, I don't have a comment with the visitor, but I do have a, um, a technical um, announcement. Uh, Missy has temporarily left the meeting. Uh, she will be trying to join back in. Uh, but okay. just at the moment, uh, we can't take any action because we don't cur currently have a quorum. We won't have a quorum for the next couple of minutes. And Andrea is trying to uh, join now, so I'm going to add her. We should be OK. We're good. We should be all right. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, are there any comments from our guests that are here? Okay. Um, Dana, correspondence. Whoops. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Lisa. I'm sorry. I, I did have a question. I was having technical difficulties. Um, I noticed on the agenda that you were going to be looking at um, policy for student treatment and staff treatment. And I was just curious about how um, the school district goes about collecting that data because I, I just didn't know. Thank you. Um, well, I'm not exactly sure, Lisa, how to answer your question. This is a, these are two policies that, um, they're monitoring reports. I'm monitoring. So uh, I, I'll leave it to Dana to answer that. Uh, those questions are gathered by, uh, by me and I report on all of our compliance requirements, whether they're state or federal or what we're doing in terms of, um, uh, of communicating with, uh, staff. So it's, um, I, gather, I gather that information. It's not necessarily a survey or feedback, but it's a report on how we, uh, we operate within the facility with respect to uh, respecting uh, state, federal, and local uh, requirements for uh, uh, ensuring collective bargaining agreements and you know, regular uh, uh, Department of Labor um, workplace uh, uh, treatment of, uh, of folks and fair treatment. So, uh, and the same is true for students. We report on confidentiality. We report on uh, a variety of things. Those reports will be on the um, will be available for people to uh, review. Everybody at the board has to copy, but uh, okay. with the technology that we're currently using, we don't have them available for people uh, attending remotely. Those were uh, generally uh, copies were made for people in the audience when people actually uh, attended in person. So, and just. Just to let um, visitors know, typically um, we the comment period is the time for the board to listen to what you have to say and to then respond at a later time. Um, but that was a very quick answer, so that was why that was there. Are there any other comments that you'd like us to hear? Hearing none. Um, Respondents? That's me. Sorry, yes. I knew it was up. Uh, of course, I have, I have two letters. Um, both, I think, are for treatment in executive session, but I can get content. Uh, one is a letter of, um, uh, well, I guess it's technically not a resignation, but a notification of intent not to return. <laughs> Uh, okay. Part of a uh, professional staff member, and the uh, second is a, um, a a follow up question on a request for um, <coughs> benefit uh, that is covered under the collective bargaining agreement uh, and uh, qualifications. So I will uh, address those uh, during the executive session on um, personnel. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, under the consent agenda, we have minutes of May 6th, and I haven't heard anybody say that we need to pull them out of consent, so they must be fine. Minutes do need to be pulled. We have one ah. connection. Thank so, you. <laughs> I missed it, Linda. Okay. Um, Nick, are you? I'm here. Okay. Um, so, Linda, do you mind if we do the accounts payable and then make the corrections for the minutes, or do you want me to make the minutes first? Do the bills, 
during this part, and then we put the um, corrections for the minutes under action. Okay. So, Nick, Thank I think you. you have Building and Equipment Reserve, nothing spent. General Fund, $3,504.40. Revolving fund, nothing. McClure grant, nothing. Makery, nothing. Payroll, one payroll uh, at May 8th, 5-8-2020 for $80,289.23. That's it. Good. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the action agenda, we will start with minutes of May 6th. I understand we have a correction. The only correction that I know of is that I mistakenly put Christina as present when she was not able to attend that meeting. So well, she was present spirit. Don't know if there's any others. Does anybody else have any other corrections? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of May 6, 2020 with the correction that Christina was actually not present? So Anyone? Moved. So moved. Second. So Kim is moved to accept the minutes of May 6, 2020 um, with the correction as noted. Nick has seconded the motion. All in favor, please say aye or wave your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion's passed. Um, policy 2.1, treatment of students. The monitor report, Dana. He's muted. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be a good uh, participant and uh, forget to take my, uh, put my mic back on. Uh, so most of you should have this in front of you. If you have any questions, uh, certainly feel free to ask. There are a couple of highlights. It's a fairly long report. I added some things that are uh, unusual with respect to our, our COVID situation and our remote learning. Uh, so I'll try to highlight um, uh, some of those things. Um, with respect to uh, the treatment of students, uh, one of the things that's really important is that um, we, uh, the, no decision that would be made that would be inequitable, unsafe, untimely, undignified, or unnecessarily intrusive. So uh, some of the additional challenges with remote learning require logistics, and uh, equity is a major part of that. So we have created six teams to answer questions re related to um, equity, dignity, safety, and timeliness, and uh, those are listed there. Um, Communication is pretty is particularly important, uh, as well as instruction and student support, and logistics. So we need to be mindful also of the intrusiveness that such communications uh, can have, and we're offering different ways that students can remain connected. So uh, with a, a video, um, with video access to certain homes, that might create uh, an embarrassing situation. So students can also call in, and they don't need to have their they don't need to have their um, uh, cameras on. So we're trying to be mindful of a variety of different uh, situations that can arise for our students uh, during this time of remote learning. We're also trying to make sure that our logistics team can deliver whatever students uh, need as we try to address that particular um, point on the monitoring report. Uh, with respect to uh, bullet number one, uh, the superintendent will not elicit information which is not uh, clearly necessary. Um, once again, with remote learning, uh, we surveyed our families uh, about electronic equipment and access online. It was voluntary. People could put in what they needed. Uh, that has been very useful in terms of helping us to understand what students and families' needs are uh, so that we can decide uh, how to provide equitable access. Uh, I think that that's uh, extremely important. Uh, with, res uh, with respect to Bullet number two, and the use of methods for collecting, for collecting and trans, uh, reviewing and uh, transmitting or storing student information. We have uh, uh, purple compliance, family education, like the Privacy Act, and we do training uh, every year at the beginning of the year for um, the staff to be able to be in control. Well, with respect to number three, uh, the superintendent should now 
uh, fair comparable facility and program with appropriate accessibility and privacy. Uh, once again, we're in compliance with our state and federal laws and guidelines. And uh, during this uh, time of remote learning, our uh, safety team is currently reviewing our health and safety plan for compliance with the governor's stay at home order and particularly addendum number 12 issued on May 1st. And uh, we have a, an operating draft that we have distributed to staff. And we have contact today our um, part of our safety team with uh, coordinating with ACSD so that we could uh, make sure that the two buildings which share uh, common uh, entry uh, are in uh, sync with respect to those uh, expectations. And we found that we were uh, extremely uh, well coordinated, even though we weren't uh, working um, specifically on that. And so um, uh, we have one more safety team meeting next Monday, and we will be formalizing that. Um, and uh, some of the uh, components have already been put in place with respect to entry to our building uh, to make them that type of uh, acceptability. Except there's more um, With respect to um, uh, bullet point number four, um, making sure that people are aware of what is expected. Um, uh, the student handbook uh, is uh, with all of our policy at the next location. And this spring, uh, we have our family updated with uh, the communications that we have sent out, and those have been posted on the website for options uh, of uh, access if anybody wants to look at them. And, uh, I do my best to try to keep the board apprised of all uh, communications that go out to the community. Um, with respect to uh, number five, uh, we have uh, a non-discrimination statement contained in the student handbook, uh, and uh, that is also um, that is the um, summary of my uh, executive limitations report. Are there any questions for Dana? Hearing none, Dana, the policy 2.2, 2 .2, treatment of teachers and staff. Yes, thank you. Uh, Suzanne, uh, with respect to policy 2.2, uh, we have clear uh, procedures uh, that have been established for onboarding uh, our employees as well as our volunteers. And uh, I and the business manager periodically review provisions of the uh, collective bargaining agreement to make sure that we uh, maintain uh, consistency of the application of those provisions. Uh, with respect to uh, bullet number one, uh, the superintendent shall not operate without written administrative procedures that clarify rules for staff, provide effective handling of grievances, and protect against wrongful conditions, uh, such as nepotism and gross uh, preferential treatment. Um, uh, I believe that we have um, uh, uh, good uh, communications with the association. Uh, there are multiple members of the association that will uh, meet with me either on a regular scheduled basis or on an impromptu basis uh, for exchanging good um, uh, communications. Um, the, with respect to um, uh, professional staff, they all get a copy of the teacher's handbook as well as uh, you know, the master agreement. Uh, in addition, new staff members are provided with an orientation before the start of school, uh, and they're assigned a mentor. Uh, this spring, with respect to our challenging situation, we have held weekly staff meetings um, as, as frequently as twice or three times a week, three times in the beginning. Actually, in the beginning, I think it was every, we were meeting, I think we were meeting every day, every week, three times a week and twice a week. Uh, and we've provided opportunities for faculty and staff to ask questions, and we've provided resources to help teachers to keep uh, have teachers keep uh, track of students, as well as uh, establishing a system for greater student and family um, engagement. Um, with respect to intentionally violating point number two, uh, the terms of either the staff or teacher master agreement, uh, we believe that we're proactive in establishing a process for communicating around those uh, procedures. And uh, last year, we, uh, as a result of our own exploration and uh, input from the, uh, the associations, we uh, explored getting a, a third, new third-party administrator uh, that communicated very clearly, and we um, retained them this year. They also provided uh, key uh, information for the rollover to uh, January 1, 20, 
uh, 20 and provided uh, information updates on uh, how the uh, third party uh, plan would work. And uh, to this point, I am not aware of any uh, challenges with respect to the uh, implementation of that uh, third party administered plan uh, for this year. And we had very few last year after we made the conversion. Um, for point number three, uh, superintendent shall not violate any state and federal employment law or conviction. <coughs> uh, at the time of this report, all indications are that we are in full compliance with employ employment law provisions at the state and federal level. Uh, we did have a, uh, an opportunity to do a self-audit with the Department of Labor. They came in a couple of times. They visited with us in January, gave us an overview, reviewed all of our um, uh, our accounts for, um, you know, claims that might be related to uh, unemployment and things like that, and said that gave us a clean bill of health that we were in complete compliance with that. Um, in, in addition, uh, we do anti-harassment training and non-discrimination training as part of our uh, in-service, in uh, pre-service, pre-week service uh, at the beginning of each year, and we did that again this year. Um, uh, the superintendent should not discriminate against any staff member for non-disruptive expressive or dis uh, expressions of dissent. Um, the superintendent has striven to cultivate a climate of cooperation and collaboration that supports proactive engagement for expressing productive opinions and uh, reflective contributions. Uh, in fact, our center-wide uh, center ground rules, which uh, include participating <laughs> meetings and professional interactions, uh, have assumed good intentions, offer thoughtful critiques, monitor individual airtime, and be thoughtful and act an active listener while maintaining confidentiality. And I will say that uh, uh, those uh, ground rules are uh, maintained uh, rather well uh, throughout the year and with uh, all uh, uh, staff, professional or support staff. Um, the superintendent should not fail to acquaint teachers and staff uh, with the superintendent's interpretation of their protections under the policy. Uh, policy 2.2 is included in the faculty and staff handbook, and the superintendent has taken proactive measures to address conditions that um, provide a safe, healthy, and respectful work movement. Um, as mentioned above, in response to, point to Article 2.21, the faculty and staff convene twice weekly to review practices and procedures during uh, remote learning. Um, and uh, that gives the uh, leadership team an opportunity to address a variety of questions and provide guidance. Uh, with respect to number six, uh, uh, the superintendent should not allow teachers or staff to be unprepared to deal with emergency situations. Uh, our safety team uh, convenes uh, uh, monthly and we do regular uh, reports or updates at faculty meetings and involve the staff in a lot of the uh, training and the um, <coughs> procedures for uh, evacuation, lock-in, and so forth that we practice regularly in conjunction with uh, MUHS. Um, recently, we've drafted a health and safety protocol uh, for in uh, increased access to the building, and that's being reviewed. It's already been shared as a draft with the, uh, with the staff, and the safety and leadership teams are doing final approval. Uh, leadership team, I think, approved that just yesterday. Uh, we shared it with uh, MUHS today, and we've got a safety team meeting on Monday to finalize that. And so we think that uh, this is a very proactive way to be addressing concerns for safety uh, and emergency situations. And we will share the protocol with the board um, shortly. That's the end of my um, <coughs> report on treatment of teachers and staff. Thank you, Dana. Are there any questions for Dana on his report? Hearing none, we will move on to corporate resolutions. Jason, do you need motions to accept those two policies? Oh, yes, I'm due. sorry. Can I have a motion to accept policy 2.1 and 2.2, please? Still moved, Kim. Kim moved and Second. Mike seconded to accept policy 2.1 and 2.2. Treatment of students and treatment of staff. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote on approving policy 2.1, treatment of students, policy 2.2, treatment of staff. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion's passed.
Gibson, corporate resolutions. Okay, uh, regarding uh, corporate resolutions, um, there are three here on the agenda. And at this point, I'm really uh, prepared to move forward with one of them. <laughs> Uh, the, the ones that I, I don't want to discuss today are the revenue anticipation note. I'm currently working with the bank on, on the amount. And and th so that will be ready in the following uh, board meeting. And the other item is the uh, approval of signatures on accounts. And I, in discussions with Dana, I think... I th I think we determined it would make sense for uh, once we know who my replacement will be, that we will have a name that we can uh, put forth and, 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 and will because <laughs> and, and that person will be able to, will, will have the authority to sign off on accounts. So I think it may, we determined it makes sense to follow up on that. I, issue uh, on the following meeting so today i'd like to so give excuse me for a second so you're uh, recommending to put that one on the uh, june agenda as well that is correct okay okay so um what i have is the approval of the authorization of invoice payments and and that's basically bills right Bill, that's the review. The review of bills that um, that more people are doing. Mm. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah. So the board is authorizing members to review, authorize payment, and sign director's orders as needed with respect to uh, invoice payment. So, I, does everyone ha have that information? I, I think it was posted on the uh, on the website. It was put in the um, uh, folder for the board, the board's working folder. I, and I think they also got an email from me, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes. It's the one that has the Hannaford, um, Hannaford, uh, gosh, I can't think of the word is, letterhead attached to it. On the back side, yeah, on the second page. So, so currently, Gibson, under the past, the one that we signed last year, how did we authorize that? Can you tell us? Okay. Well, you authorized uh, board members to uh, re review. Well, let's see, you, you, you created a a list of, of board members who <laughs> review and uh, review and approve uh, invoices. So there, uh, currently, I believe that there are three board members that do that. Um, I think it's Nick, Missy, and Sean are, are the three. And Suzanne. And Suzanne. And Suzanne, that's correct. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I, I guess. We need to determine if uh, who, who will be doing this the, the following year. So basically, what it entails, and Nick, you can jump in at any point, is um, going in twice a twice a month and reviewing bills, um, looking at any of the documents that go along with them, um, and then. Sometimes we have questions because we don't understand what the bill is. So we'll go from there. Um, but Nick, do you have any other comments to add into it or? No, I, I, I think in general they're fairly well, do they're pretty well documented. Take, takes about an hour, um, twice a month. Um, The, the, the questions do come up, and uh, the staff is usually pretty helpful in responding. 
But um, Gibson, I'm not quite clear what what your 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 um, policy is saying here. It, if I'm looking at the correct document, is it is it talk about? Approve a board member or two to approve invoices at any time if there is not a quorum or the board meeting is not at a regularly scheduled date. Is that the document you're talking about? Uh, let's see. It looks like there's two parts to the document. Uh, on, on the front side is you're identifying who will be <laughs> on the front side you'll be identifying who will be uh, which, which board members will be <clears throat> doing the invoice review uh, there is a second on the flip side of the same document is, is what is, is the portion that you just read. So this, this is a memorandum from you to uh, uh, Patricia Hannaford, school board members, to, to board members. Right. right? Dated May 13th. So, so yeah, these, these are actually two, two different documents. Uh, so could you explain the, 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 the memorandum document that you wrote? Because can I have a clarifying question, Nick, to help maybe advance our understanding? Well, uh, Gibson. The, the, Gibson, yes, could you? Maybe you could go through your document and explain it. Um, Uh, Gibson, I think that uh, the the document that has the corporate resolution for the uh, board members to review invoices is the same one that has your memorandum on it. Is that correct? The memorandum yes. The page, I think it's page two of that same corporate resolution. Just a clarification. Yes. Uh, uh, so, the, um, the the clarifying question that I have is that the uh, each year we have to have uh, board members listed to review. That's what was required by the bank and what's required by us to do a review to make sure that the board is exercising its fiscal responsibility of reviewing things. The emergency component that you put on the back side it allows us to have the board members review it at an interim phase so that we don't actually incur um, a late fees. Previously, it was only done once a, a month, and it was done just before the board meeting, but some of our bills were going to be due before the board uh, could actually meet and, um, and review the consent agenda. So we added the second uh, time during the month so that we wouldn't get hit with fees and then it gets all reported at one time at the board meeting but there's uh, that's why it's every two weeks as Nick said is that is that correct is my understanding of that operation accurate uh, that, repeat something. That, that is correct Anna that that's the way we operate Okay. So, so that, that, that explains the second bullet you have there, I think. It's the first bullet I, I was questioning more because you say approve a board member or two to approve invoices at any time there is not a quorum or the board meeting date is not at the regularly scheduled time. The, and then you explain down below the first approval would only be used if the board did not meet on the board authorization date. Uh, Nick, I can give you an example of that. Uh, yeah. Two years ago in March, we did not, we had to cancel a board meeting and <laughs> schedule it uh, as a result of a snow day. That would have meant that they we wouldn't be 
uh, able to approve those payments during that time. So the uh, authorization from the um, that uh, Gibson has here allows board members uh, until the next board meeting can uh, occur to be able to provide that um, to provide that um, coverage uh, oversight that coverage. Yes, that's my understanding. I'll ask Gibson if that's his interpretation. So Dana, can you check the chat? Judd can't get any. Needs the link sent to him. I sent him it. Okay. Two minutes ago. Yep. Thank you. So does anybody have any other questions or concerns or Nick? Do you need something rewritten on that need to make it clearer? Well, I, I I think the first bullet should maybe have the the paragraph below explain it right after that bullet and, and the same for the second bullet what the scenario is there okay but, but okay. it's a present is presentation i i think thanks to dana's uh, explanation I, I understand where it's where it's going i'm not sure it's very clear but i understand where it's going so oh, should we work on it and make it explicitly clear and then bring it back for next board meeting? I can work on it. Okay. So then, um, uh, if I'm understanding, you're going to table the uh, of authorization for invoice payments the next month as well yeah as long as, that's, as long as the board is okay with that um, so uh, just for clarification we are going to need the names of any board members who would be willing to um, to review bills I think we currently have a primary list of four and I think three board members do it pretty regularly that's uh, uh, Misty, yourself, and uh, Nick. But in a pinch, uh, we like to have two each month, uh, each uh, uh, each time. And so, if there are other members who would be willing to give that hour uh, in a pinch, if they would uh, let you know by next meeting, so that those names could be filled in, in at the June meeting, that would be appreciated. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. makes sense to me. Okay. And, I'll, okay. and I'll continue signing them. Um, Judd is still struggling to get anything to work tonight. He just uh, said that he's not getting in. That's too bad. I just, I, he tried my link though. I'm assuming. Oh, I asked him. I said, did you get Dana's link? He's typing now. Okay, I'll I'll take my and uh, see if I can talk him through it. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, I'm thinking we should probably have a motion to move those yeah. three. I I would make a motion to defer approval of the corporate resolution policy to the next meeting uh, when the wording has been clarified. So there's a motion on the table to move corporate resolution approval to the next meeting until the wording has been clarified. Is there a second? Second, Kim. Kim seconded. So motion on the table is to move the um, approval of corporate resolutions to the next meeting and to have one of them clarified. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passed. I need to know who seconded. Um, I second it, Kim. Kim okay. seconded. Sorry, Linda. That's okay. Um, moving into the informational agenda, um, there were reports submitted. Are there any questions on those reports?
one question that I had that's not necessarily in the reports, but is Brent, yeah, Brenda's still on. So Brenda, is, um, can you tell us, tell the board anything about where things are headed as far as um, the completer ceremony for May 28th? Or maybe not? Was that question for me, Suzanne? No, it was for Brenda, but I don't think she can hear me or... Brenda, is there anything? Brenda, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, am I on? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the question is, so um, we, we're trying to, we're shooting for the scheduled date of May 28th, which has been on the calendar. And there's still um, a lot of details to work out around that, about how it's going to unfold. I can't give you more details than that. Um, I do know that we're working on um, getting yard signs um, that have photos of our completers. Um, that will honor uh, those students who are completing their programs. We're working with um, 802 Print in Virgins. We've done work with him before. He's excellent. And um, we're in the process of obtaining those photos right now for that purpose. Um, and I have a meeting scheduled tomorrow morning <laughs> around the uh, com um, end of the year event. So. Um, yeah, but a heads up, if I knew I was going to be asked, I would have more details solidified for you, but <laughs> that's what I can offer you right now. That's fine. Does anybody have any other questions for Brenda that she might be able to answer on such a short notice? Brenda, this is Kim. Uh, question is, um, I, the signs pretty, sound like they're pretty similar to what they did last year with the addition of a picture where would they be located are they going to go back to their home school or, you know any any idea what what the purpose of that is yes yes the thought was to um put them out on the front lawn like we did last year and take a like a kind of a panning slow video of those okay and um with uh all the proper permissions be able to post that on our facebook page and then um, we have had volunteers say they'd be willing to drive the signs to the student's home. We've also had ideas where um, people could make an appointment, like a parent and student could make an appointment to stop by and pick up their sign. And then we could even get a picture of them um, holding it <laughs> um, or something like that along those lines. Has there been a conversation with Addison Independent to cover that um, idea? Not yet, but we always do. So I'm uh, that is on the list of things to do. Thank you. Yeah. I'm also working on the National Technical Honor Society ceremony, which was um, got the plug pulled on that one day before the event was going to happen. Unfortunately, that's the way it it played out in March. Um, so uh, working on pulling those details together and I'm hoping for June 2nd to be able to um, have some way to recognize those students who achieved that honor. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Any other questions or comments or Nope. Okay. Um, moving on. Policy 4.1 governing style. Kim, would you like to take it? Sure. Um, great attendance. That's what, 21 people on? Thank you very much for the guests and everyone else who are obviously interested in what we're doing. Um, efficient 
as usual. Thank you, Susan. And uh, the uh, amount of people that are involved in all of these processes, thank you very much for taking your time as faculty members to come back and uh, speak with us personally. It makes a big difference. Other than that, it sounded great. Thank you. So um, may I, so two things. One, we need to go into executive session for negotiations and personnel. Per one, VSA section 313A2 and 313A3. Um, but did everyone get my email with the executive session link in it? It's a Zoom video. It's not a whatever this is, it's Zoom. Um, so everyone got that? Yes? Yes. I, got, I don't think I have if you need me for a portion of that. I did send it to you just separate, just before the meeting. Okay. I will check to see if I have it then. Okay. If you don't, I can send it to you again. Nice. Um, so if we can have a motion to go into executive session and then we'll take about five minutes to get back on. So moved, Kim. Second, Nick. I moved and seconded um, to go into executive session for the purpose of negotiations and personnel. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, I thank you all for attending this regular session of the meeting. I'll see you at 5.53 or so in executive session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.